Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith from Storyville Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve this edit. It's actually two images merged together and also a head swap. So let me show you what we will be working with. For this image, I absolutely love how my children are posed and looking at me, at least two of the three, but that's where the head swap will come into play. But I do not love this blown out sky. It just draws attention away from my subjects and it's not going to be a great image because of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take part of the background from here and get rid of that blown out sky. And then I'm going to take my daughter's cute little face here that's actually looking at me and go ahead and put it on her body here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is reset my settings here so you can see what the raw file looks like. I like to shoot with the automatic white balance um, in my camera and then adjust my temperature slider to where I like it. So it tends to be on the cooler side. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is hit the simplicity one. And then I'm going to just move the temp slider over to the right until I like what I see. And that looks about good to me. Oops. Sometimes when you let it go, it jumps up a little bit. So, okay, that looks good to me. And then I'm going to just go ahead and straighten it a little bit. And now I'm going to open these up into Photoshop. Okay, now that we are in Photoshop, the first thing I'm going to do is do the head swap. So there's many different ways that people do this. I'm just going to show you how I personally like to do it. Um, I am going to take the lasso tool and just kind of select my daughter's head there. And then command copy to copy it. And then I'm going to come over here and zoom in a little bit. I like to zoom in as close as possible, about 100%, so I can really line things up good. And then I'm going to hit Command V to paste it. I'm going to lower the opacity so I can see how her head is going to line up with the rest of her shirt and stuff. And then I'm going to hit Command T, uh, which is free transform, to move it. And what I'm looking for here is to kind of line up her shirt and my son's hand because I just want her face to look like it's proportionate and where it should be. And that looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK there. And I'm going to hit the layer mask, hit Command I. I like to invert it and grab a soft black brush. Oh, sorry, not black, white brush. I'm going to increase the opacity there and make sure my layer mask is selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and just paint on her face. It's like magic, right? Here we go. And now she's actually looking at me. And then I like to go back over it with a black brush. As you can see, there's a little bit um, of her shirt there that I want to get rid of. Oh, this is also not a 100%. So, okay. Oops. Just kind of fiddle around with it till you're happy because you don't want any weird things um, on your photo, obviously. So I'm going to make sure that his hand's in check there and looks good. Okay. So that is the before and after, and that looks pretty good to me. Looks like there's still a little bit of a weird funk going on here. Okay. And that's pretty close. If I didn't already have an image, I would spend a little bit more time on this, but I don't want to like bore you guys. Um, you get the gist. So that is the before and after. And now I'm going to go up to layer, flatten, and then I want to copy it. So command or select it, command A, Copy it, Command C, and then I want to paste it on this background, Command V. Okay, and now just how I did on the head swap, I want to lower the opacity a little bit so I can see both um, the background and my image to line things up. Command T to move it. I want to line up the sidewalk a little bit. Like I'm going for like the white part here on the brick and that looks pretty good to me. They don't need to be perfectly lined up with my children because we're getting rid of those. Okay, and that looks good. So I'm going to crank the opacity and then I'm going to add a layer mask. Soft black brush, 100% opacity. I'm going to get rid of this line here. And 
and over here, and we will be cropping this in a little bit too. Then, voila. Getting rid of all the stuff that I don't want. And then we want to make these palms look believable. So after I continue to get rid of this image, part of it anyway, we might have to remove some of my kids' heads, but that's super easy to do if necessary. As you can see, his little head is kind of popping through his hair. So all I need to do is click on my background layer, grab a cologne stamp, and I'm gonna just grab a little bit of the screen I see over here. And that looks good to me. Now his little head is gone. Come back over here with my brush. And I actually think I got a little bit too close with this background over here. So I'm going to erase some of that. And you can also play around and move your subjects if you need to by using the free transform. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. A little bit more over here. Okay, so that is the before and after. Makes such a huge difference. I think I might need to move them over just a teeny bit. Command T. And that looks even better to me. So... Again, I gotta go to the background, grab the clone stamp, and just grab some of this greenery over here to get rid of the heads poking through. Okay, and that looks good. So now I wanna crop out these hard edges by going, um, by selecting my image. I'm gonna go Command A, and then I want to go to Transform Selection, and I'm gonna just bring this up Bring this over a little bit. And despite the rule of thirds, I do like to center my um, subjects quite often. So Photoshop has this handy little tool that helps you line it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the check mark and then hit, where did we go, crop. There. Okay, now we pretty much have our image how we want it. Got a little something funky going on up here. So I'm gonna take the soft black brush and just kind of paint in there. Okay, now I'm happy with the image, so I wanna to go to layer and flatten, and now we'll do some of the fun editing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit Command J to make a copy of the background layer, go up to filters, camera raw. Let me move this in so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna go over to my presets and I'm gonna hit the simplicity one. Or was it two? Two looks better to me, so that is what we're gonna go with and hit okay. I like to stack presets. As you guys saw, I used the simplicity preset in Lightroom and now again in Photoshop, but I'm gonna turn the opacity down a little bit. I like to go to the zero and kind of crank it up to where my eye likes it. And that looks good to me, about 47%. This is the before and after. I'm gonna hit a layer mask. I want the background a little bit softer. So I'm gonna only keep um, the preset on my subjects and just remove from here. And now I'm gonna go over to my action panel and hit the ultimate dodge and burn. Play. Open up the group. And I'm gonna start with the clothing. I'm gonna go to the dodge and burn, um, actually just the burn. And I'm gonna select a soft white brush at 100% opacity. And as you can see, there's little areas on my daughter's dress that are kind of blown out. I'm just gonna darken them a little bit. And then I'm gonna come over here to the extra dodge and really make this dress pop. It's pulling out some of the highlights. Turn it down and just gradually increase it. And that looks good to me. So this is the before and after. My son looks good there. I'm gonna just leave his clothing alone. I'm not gonna go too heavily on the dodge and burn here. We'll keep it nice and simple, despite my other images, which I really go heavy with. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the skin and hair dodge and burn, soft white brush, and I'm just gonna kinda of click it on her face here and turn it down and just ever so slightly brighten her up. Same with my son, a little bit of their legs. 
and then over here. Okay, and now into the environment, I'm going to grab the extra burn, 100% opacity, and kind of really make the bottom part, the floor, the ground, um, stand out a little bit more by decreasing that. And by decreasing that, I mean darkening the ground. Um, now I want to add a little sparkle to the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Storyville Sparkle 1, drag and drop it, or you can go to File, Open, and type in Storyville Sparkle, and do it that way. Copy and paste it over your image. I'm going to switch it to Soft Light, and pull it down to the ground, Expand. Then I want to add a layer mask, Command-I to invert it. And I also want to take away the gold color, so I'm going to grab a hue and saturation adjustment, click the downward arrow so it only affects the sparkle overlay, and completely get rid of the saturation there. Okay, now I'm going to grab a soft white brush, 100% opacity, and just paint it on the bottom there. Perfect. So this is the before and after. And now I want to go ahead and grab a sun, so I'm going to type in... Storyville Ultimate Light. And then I'm going to come into here and I want to grab Storyville Sun 2, drag and drop, set to screen mode, and come up here and just put it into the trees so it looks like there's a nice little haze. And then I want to get rid of the hard lines. You can either add um, a layer mask and use a soft black brush to brush it off, or you can go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then I like to use it around 30 or 40 percent. And that takes away the hard line from the overlay. So that is the before and after, and I'm happy with all of that. So I'm going to go to Layer, Flatten, and the next thing I want to do is come over to my Actions, and I want to run the Painterly, hit Play, now for the base, I only want it to affect the hair on this image. Sometimes I'll leave it on the whole image and just brush it off their um, features, uh, their face, their you know toes, hands, whatever. But in this case, I just want it on their hair. So I'm going to hit Command-I, use a soft black brush, at 100% opacity, and just kind of paint on. And it smooths out some of those flyaways. I just love it. And then you can either keep it at 100% opacity, or you can kind of drag it to where your eye likes it. And I think I'll keep it about 60%. And then I kind of want to brighten them all up with um, a little bit more color. So I'm going to select the Color Dazzle. It comes on super strong. So again, I'm just going to turn it to zero and crank it up to where I like it. And that looks good to me. So this is the before and after with the Painterly. And now I'm going to grab a new layer white brush, and I'm going to come over to my brushes, and I want to use the Storyville Floating Particles. I use, you can get this from like the Apocalypse Walk, ugh, Apocalypse Walk, what, Walker Pack, I cannot talk today, guys, I am so sorry, or a couple other ones. It's kind of my go-to brush. I just love the little, um, it just adds to the environment so much, so just going to add a little bit in there. That's the before and after. And then the last thing I want to do, flatten the image, and then I'm going to make a copy of the background layer, Command-J, and I want to poof out her hair a little bit. So I'm going to use the Liquidify, go into the Liquidify filter. Ooh, it's very big. Let me try and shrink this down for you guys so you can see everything that I'm doing. Okay. So... I like to use this little um, this little guy over here, the forward warp tool. And then these are my settings. You can play around and make them however you'd like. This tends to be my go-to settings. And then I'm just going to grab my brush and pull up on her bun and kind of even it out. Boom. And that looks good to me. So that's the before. And after. Okay, guys, I think we about did it here. Again, we started with this cute little face, my children from this image, background from here, and ended up here. 
You can find everything I used here at www.storyvillephotography.com. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.